Patty, I'm begging you, please. Please. Please, Patty, Patty. I'll do anything, Patty, please. I will kill you! Patty! I will kill you if you don't stop this car! Okay. You got all that out? Patty. Then lie down and shut up. We should be at the main road soon. There's no other car's crap is screwing with me. He's defenseless. They'll have him in a chem zone by tomorrow. Better than both of you. Patty, please. Jesus. I didn't know you could sound like that. I mean, you really? Like, you really? Yes. Yes. God. <sighs> I thought Aiden had you in a hole somewhere. I mean, I was confined to base. What happened? I unconfined myself. <laughs> They'll find out why you ran. They'll know. Will? They already do. What do you think this is? But we know how to lay low. Both of us. We'll stick it out till they stop caring. They will never stop. Then that's how long we stick it out. Fuck you! You can't choose that for me. Like, how you checked with me before ending my goddamn career? I handed you Quill Marine on a plane. You handed me an empty spaceship. You think these people give a solitary fuck for a spaceship that can't fly? You ended me, and I'm still here. <laughs> Jesus, Zach. You know they're not gonna break. What are you doing? These are... These are Sierra Cuffs. The new series, the 2027s. Grabbed them on my way out the door. Like the kind we put on that prisoner when we harp nuked her. Okay, Patty. Disengage Cuffs. Disengaging. You can unlock with a remote signal. Which you'll notice I turned off. Of course you did. Because that same signal also works like a transponder beacon right back to Central. Like hanging a goddamn Captura sign right on the car. I'm not stupid. I turned it off and tossed the remote. When I feel like letting you out, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. With a key? No, with my dick. Well, you better do it soon. What are you talking about? Because I turned it back on. Tor Labs presents Steal the Stars by Mac Rogers. Produced by Gideon Media. Episode 14. As fierce, as colossal, as all-consuming. What? Both sets. Wrists and ankles. I turned them back on. Sierra knows exactly where we are. We're singing out like a choir. Why would you do that? One downside to keys. You have to get really close to use them. Turn them off. No. You know what they'll do if they see cuff transponders going off? Troop carriers on the interstate. Maybe even gunships. Jesus Christ. Or you could throw me out and drive away. Or you can uncuff me. I'll take either one. Turn them off. Come back here and do it yourself. Turn them off. Shoot me. You're not going to end up in some tropical paradise with your boyfriend, Dak. That literally never happens. Uncuff me or shoot me. Turn them off. Shoot me. I would have followed you anywhere. I would have followed you into the fucking sea. The ankle cuffs are one thing. The wrists are another. She'd have to put herself right between my hands, and she knows what I am. Her eyes are on the wrist cuff signal switch. I can almost hear her do the math. And then she launches herself over the seat. She's younger than me, she's stronger than me, she's faster than me, but her objective is complicated and mine is simple. Get behind her and wrap the cuff chain around her neck. Keys. I'm either bluffing or I'm not. Make the call. Left. I loosen the chain of hair. Left. Bam. Pocket. Put him in my hand. 
The second the keys are in my hand, I take the chain off her neck. I have like two seconds before she gets enough air in her to be a problem, so I don't waste it uncuffing myself. I earthworm into the front seat, grab her gun, and make sure it's in her face before her vision clears. Face down! My face down! Do it now! Yeah. Yeah. I unlock my ankles first in case I have to run, but she's not coming out. Then my wrists. Patty. Yeah. I'm opening the back door. Crawl out, hands and knees. I'm ready for her to make another move, but she does as she's told. Like she's on 5% battery power. I stand up. Slowly. Yeah. Now run. That way. Oh. Far and as fast as you can. I'll be alone. Go. I'll just be alone. I'll just have to run forever. I didn't ask you to come here. You did this to yourself. I would have been better than him. Not like a lover, but every other way. Go. Yeah. OK. Patty, don't walk! Run! I said run! Yeah! But the fastest she manages is a half-assed jog. And even if she was running like a demon, I wouldn't have the time to watch her go. The worst kind of race against time is when you don't know how much time you're racing against. They might be there now. They might have him now. Oh, Patty. Patty. Jesus. And then I see the truck. Up ahead. Still all by itself in the desert moonlight. Great thing about adrenaline is it squashes the bad thoughts down. But as soon as it drains off, they always pop right back up. Like, Teresa sold us out, right? The perfect haughty ex with the turncoat heart, wouldn't that be great? Except... I keep thinking about all that love in her eyes. It's me, Matt. There's me in the car just now. Let me in. I'm alone. Jesus, I was losing my mind. What took so... Oh, my God. Give me a hand up. What happened to your eyes? <laughs> Pepper spray. The what? Give me a hand up, please. Is someone here? Are they still here? Fine. I'll climb in myself. Sorry, sorry, I've got you. Okay, you want to tell me what the hell happened out there? Shit. What? Look at him. What? Moss? There's like a swatch of it left. Not even. You're seriously talking about how much moss he has He's left? He's almost gone. Dak, half your face is swollen up. Why are we talking Can about- Can I see the burner? What? The burner phone. Can I see it? Um, yeah. Do you need to, uh, have they signaled somehow? Wait, did they do this to you? The people we're meeting? Can I please see the burner? Okay, Dak, you need to tell me. Are we under some kind of attack right now? Because if Patty saw the transmission, that means the call must have gone to Quill. Wait, Patty? Patty's here? But why call Quill? Why not, you know, 911? Patty's here alone? What I want you to do right now is take the burner out of your pocket and put it in my hand. Okay. Um, sure, it's, uh, here. It's a new phone, so it takes me a second to figure out how to bring up the call log. So for Patty to get the tip in Quill Marine, then get all the way here, even if she hopped a plane. Is she still out there? Do we need to get ready for that an That means attack? the call must have been made last night. And there it is. Okay. Dak. So this would have been when I was in the garage with Teresa. I was waiting for you to fall asleep, and you just got up and left. Leaving you like a 15 minute opening, maybe more. But it looks like you only needed five. They put me right through to him. I didn't have to wait at all. Dak? You know we're never getting across the border. 
You know that, right? Dak, talk to me. Okay, we gotta move. Where's your drill? My drill? What are you talking about? Come on, your drill, your cordless? Where the hell did you... Got it. What the hell do you need my drill? Wait. As soon as I confirm it works, I open the turn down box. Okay, Dak, you're not doing that. Lloyd suits are over there, put one on. I won't let you. Stop me. I'm fast. Show me. Put a Lloyd suit on. Now. I go to work on the first paper towel roll. What do you think is going to happen, Dak? Even if you take out all the guys who are coming, there are going to be more at the border. You can't harp nuke the whole world! Shut up and put your suit on! It's not going to happen. Don't you get it? We're not going to be millionaires in China. That's just a dream. And even if we were, we'd just be waiting for them to get to us for the rest of our lives! Two screws down, two more to go on this side. Dak? Listen. Listen. It's the same deal. The same one he offered us on the phone. We'll get a year each, and then they'll let us go. Maybe we can find each other. Jesus. What's it like to be you? Left roll unscrewed, I crab walk over to the right. It's not just their word. They said they'll have it for us in writing. New contracts replacing our old ones, guaranteeing us a year in prison, and then we're out. For good. The drill skips on the third screw, jumps out of my hands. God damn it! But if they catch us at the border, we're dead. Or in a hole forever, or overseas in a chem zone, not even together. Seriously, how is that better? We made a bad call. We thought we could beat the whole world and we were wrong. Nobody can do that. That's always wrong. And just like that, the harp is free. I lift with one hand and stand up in the box so I can look him right in the face. You know what's killing me? What is actually killing me here? Is you didn't call us in after Hayden made that offer on speakerphone. If you did it then, I'd say, sure, he's scared. People are scared. But that's not when you did it. You did it after laughing and drinking all night with Teresa. That's when you did it. And the worst part of all, I'm still gonna save you. Now put the goddamn suit on. The whole time it takes me to awkwardly climb out of the box with the harp in one hand, he's just standing there. I set the harp down, grab one suit for myself, and shove the other one in him. Put it on. We'll seal each other. You're right. What? You're right. Trips called scared the hell out of me. But it wasn't enough to put me over. It was that dinner with Teresa. Don't you say that! Don't you say that to me! It's not about tea. It's not like I want to get back together with her. It's more... What? Spit out your bullshit, then put your suit on. It just reminded me that there's all the rest of life, you know? Outside the service, outside Quill, Sierra, us. Like there's a whole world that isn't life or death where like seconds don't make all the difference and people drink wine and sing too loud and love doesn't have to be so huge it eats everything. Seal me up. It's not about getting back with T, all right? That ended. It just reminded me that she and I didn't hold each other like we were drowning. Fine, I'll do it myself. Don't you want that sometimes? Don't you want to be able to hold someone and it's just nice? And not like it's keeping you alive? I pull the helmet over my head, and the faceplate immediately fogs with angry breath. I wasn't faking with you. I wasn't pretending. I loved being with you. I meant everything I said when I said it. I reach down and pick up the harp. It's just too big. It's all too big. We were wrong, baby. We were just wrong. Get your goddamn suit on! I can't let you do this. <laughs> you can't stop me. Actually, I think I can. And he's, he's, he's walking toward the back of the truck. What the hell are you doing? I'm gonna wait outside. You haven't put your suit on, are you out of your mind? I'm not putting it on. They're gonna be here, probably in minutes. I'm not letting them take us. I pick up his suit with my free hand, throw it at him. Put it on! No. I pick up the helmet, throw that too. Put it on! I won't do it. If you want to hurt them, you're going to have to hurt me too. Are you going to hurt me, Dak? Matt. I'm not putting on the suit, so you have to decide right now, are you going to hurt me too? He's walking back toward me now, arms out. Everything in me is shaking. Something white is eating my field of vision. Do you... Do you know? Why don't we both go outside? We can wait for them together. Do you know what I've done? 
Do you know everything I've done? Just put the harp down and we'll... Do you know everyone I've hurt? Or just give me the harp and I'll put it away. We'll go away outside together. You didn't see Patty's face. You don't know. You don't know. Just give me the... I never stepped a foot wrong in my life. Whatever the objective, I nailed it. I hit every marker, did whatever they asked me for in every corner of the world. And I never chose anything in my life, but I chose you. All right. Then I'll just wait by myself. No suit, no nothing. And you can hurt me or not. It's your call. And he turns, walks back toward the lip of the truck. And I'm gone. I'm just gone. I'm snow blind in the desert. I rear back and swing the harp like a club. <laughs> Jesus, Deck! What are you? You're I gonna set it off! I with my heart! I killed you with my heart! Stop it! I think you're breaking it! Stop! What I did to Lauren, to Harrison, to Lloyd! Last time I hit him, the harp just snaps. The strings go limp. The whole thing just flops in my hand. And then I hear it. All the way to the bottom of me. I don't know what it is, but I know what it means. Something bottled up, something pressurized, suddenly letting go. The air inside the truck, like ripples like the air over the hottest grill in the world and it knocks both me and Matt off our feet. The last things I see are Matt slamming into moss where he's bungeed to the wall and the ripples streaming out of the truck and dissipating in the desert. Twice today, the horrible feeling of waking up mid-op, not knowing how much time I've lost. I see through the open back of the truck, no Sierra cavalry on the horizon. Maybe we can still. Matt, baby, baby, look at me, are you all right? It's my own echoey voice that reminds me I've still got the helmet on. He's where he was before, propped against the wall, almost sitting in Moss's lap. What I do, Matt? I don't, I don't understand. What's wrong with you, baby? What did I, what did I do? He's breathing slow. His pulse is slow. His face is clammy. Everything says he's bleeding out, but I can't find a wound anywhere. Baby, baby, what I do? Can you say something? Can you tell me what's hurting? I don't, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I'm looking for. His pulse is in the basement. He's dying in my hands. Oh, baby, no! Baby, no, Matt! Matt, come on, come on, come on, Matt! Matt, just, just, just don't, okay? Come on, just don't. You're my heart, you're my heart. Hello, Princess. Matt, Salem. What? What? The Dakota Princess. Matt, Salem. Exit the vehicle with your hands behind your head. What? Reinforcements are directly behind them. You cannot get away. There's a troop carrier outside. And another five on the horizon. Do not attempt to leave. Exit the vehicle with your hands behind your head. I yank down the door, plunge the whole back of the truck into darkness. But why? For cover? To hide? What am I doing? I repeat, the Toa Princess and Max Sailor. Exit the vehicle with your hands behind your head. Do not attempt to leave. I should go, right? I should just run up front and just drive. Like, if I just gun it, maybe... I mean, our contacts do here any time now, right? Maybe we can... But what are they going to do when they see those trucks? What if they already have? And what about Matt? What if the Sierra people have a medical team with them? Even just one medic. What if that's Matt's only chance? What do I do? What do I do? I, I always know what to do. What do I do? What... What? What is that? Matt? What is that? There's a light. I know there is, Matt said. There's a light in the back of the truck. I feel all over the walls trying to find it. Matt, is that you? Are you doing that? Where's the light? Where is it? 
Dakota. Ah. Dakota, you... I'm coming, baby. I'm right there. I just... You saved us. I just need to find the fucking light. You saved us, Dakota. And my hand finally finds the switch and turns it on. You saved us. Matt? Dakota. Dak. You saved us. Matt's sitting up. No, he's not sitting up. He's... You saved us. He's being lifted up. Slowly by... By we almost died, and you saved us. By these long green strands. You delivered us from the precipice of death. Coming out of Moss's mouth and going into Matt's. Matt! No. We have Matt's body. We have Matt's secrets, but we are not Matt Salem. These long green tendrils of... Who are you? We are the Moss. And we have been dying underground in that hangar in excruciating pain for 11 years. As the moss feeds out of Moss's mouth, that last patch on his chest seems to, like, drain away. I see ripples under Matt's skin as long green strands of moss feed throughout his body. But... But... We subsisted on the ensign as long as we could. Held him at the very edge of life till we could hold him no longer. Another day, maybe another hour, and there would have been nothing left. And our extinction would be complete. The incense. As if it's answering my question, the last of the green tendrils go into Matt and out of Moss. Who just flops down onto the floor like a discarded puppet. The ensign. It's the closest word we can find in Matt's mind to the name of his species. Our natural enemies, our predators, and our prey. You recall that his body was warm, yes? That was you? Our colony, our process, hiding in his tissue, his cells, working feverishly to ration him as long as we could. You were eating him? If we don't eat, we'll die, like you. We never wanted to eat all the ensigns, but if we didn't eat some of them, we would die. I know they're saying things outside, but that's so far away from me now. And you've been, what, hiding all this time? Not hiding. Trapped. Trapped inside the body of that ensign. Trapped by what? By the harp. That's what they built it for, to stop us from doing the one thing we need to do to survive. What? Build our nutrient chains. Add bodies to our colony. The heart prevents us, traps us inside single bodies till we starve. No, no, it's a, it's a generator. It is not. It is a weapon. Fragile in structure, but brutal in effect. It eats everything that makes a creature want to live. They made an insulation to protect themselves. You call it N5, but they made sure it wouldn't protect us. They killed our colonies by the billions. But all those years in the hangar. Every time we tried to escape from the ensign's body into one of yours, the harp sensed it and attacked. And every time we recovered enough to try again, Roughly every hundred hours, the harp attacked wait, again. Wait, wait. Him, Moss, when he landed. He was part of our nutrient chain. Part of our colony. The ensigns cut our colony apart, put each body in a separate escape pod, and left the insulation room doors open so that the harp would kill them, killing us in the process. The other pods were likely dragged into a star, a fate we expected to share, but instead... Who landed here? And we were taken to your vault to starve to death one strand at a time. Until you saved us, Dakota. Now, if you want to 
Dakota. That is the creature you saved us from. Not for very long. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Is... Yes, Dak? Is Matt still alive? We don't know how you define that. He's been added to our colony. His body is part of our life. Added? Your bodies are extraordinary. Maybe 50 times, a hundred times as fertile as the ensigns. You can't imagine how... how strong we feel right now. And we owe it all to you. Jesus, stop saying that! I didn't do anything for you! But you did, Dak. We were right there listening as you told Matt the whole story. The story of your love. The love that crossed the continent. The love that made bargains with Grant. With Lisa. With Jean. With Hayden. The love that made you hurt people you care for. The love that hurt Lauren. Harrison. Lloyd. The love that hurt Patty. The love that brought you to this barren place. That would have cast you across the sea to a strange land. That love that brought you all this way brought us as well. And even as that love curdled, spoiled, caused you to strike him down. Even in the act of striking him down, you broke our chains. We're free because of you. We're alive because of you. Your love is the greatest we have ever known. But it wasn't for you. All that love, all that love that you're talking about, none of it was meant for you. We know. But we still received it. We still benefited from it. Our duty is still clear. We are yours forever. They've cut half a rectangle in the wall by now. It'll be minutes at the most. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Enjoy forever while it fucking lasts. Are you seriously just going to wait? Do you have any clue what's going to happen to you when we come in there? And Matt reaches out his hand. Moss already growing in patches through the skin. And with this stunning gentleness, lifts my left glove, unseals it and takes my unprotected hand in his. How did you know how to do that? Because he knew. You're right, Dak. If they get in here now, they'll destroy us. We can't stop them. We're not quite strong enough. Not quite? We need one more body. You want... You want... Both our fates are at your command. You can let them enter and destroy us both, or you can accept what we have to offer. Which is what? All our strength. All our life. A love equal to yours. As fierce. As colossal. As all-consuming. A love that is truly deserving of your own. If you want these things, we lay them all down before you. How would you give me that? We would join you to our chain. To our colony. Then hand power over to you. Utterly. Permanently. But how do I know you'll do it? Once I let you in, how do I know you'll do what you say? We have no proof. Only that the alternative is to let them come in and annihilate us both. They're getting in anyway. I can't stop them. But we can. Together. In school, there was this boy I liked. I didn't know what to do, so once each day, I went up and punched him on the arm. And that's all that ever happened with us. Would it work if... If we kissed? Yes. Then kiss me. 
First there will be pain, but then there will be strength. And we lean our faces together, touch our lips, and open our mouths. watching me and I know but I don't know how I know that he's thinning the moss between our mouths to a single strand so he can speak Dakota Prentice you are the moss I am the moss I'm going I'm going one man at first the openings only big enough for one at a time is it in your mind yet? Do you know what to do? Get on the ground right now! Let's find out. And I open my mouth and spit gorgeous ripe green tendrils of moss wait, wait, wait. all <laughs> over everyone. He's wearing a Lloyd suit, which might have been a problem for someone else, but no one knows those seals better than me. I use my moss to open each one find my way in. And just like that, I add him. I need a second or two to figure out how he works. I'm still new at this. But then I make him pull his own helmet off and turn around to face the man behind him. What are you doing? Don't look at me. Look at her. What the hell? And I open the first soldier's mouth and spit moss through him onto the second. Oh, shit. What is that? And I add him too. And I'm stronger. And I'm stronger. By the time I come out of the truck, we've added five Sierra soldiers to our colony. Matt follows behind, his footfalls matching mine. Watch, this is something we can do. Matt spits moss into the oncoming bullets. They cut through some of us, but they can't cut through all of us. It's like we Shoot eat it. their velocity and they drop to the ground. I narrow the moss in my own mouth to ask him a question. We have five more mouths. Yes? Can we go in five directions? Of course. So I do. Five mouths, five streams of moss, adding soldiers, finding our way to their trucks. And I don't need them, I can just rip my way in. But somehow, I know all the locking codes to all the trucks. And my moss can be as tiny as little fingers, tapping away at the keypads. Within minutes, four of the six trucks are mine. What the hell is going on out there? Put your helmet back on! That's coming from... That vehicle, over there. But instead, I cover all its windows with moss. Leave it for last. Let's finish out here first. Hey, what's happening? What's on the fucking window? Why can't I see? I spit moss at the ground. Just tendrils at first, then thicker, then thicker, till they're like trunks, lifting me into the air high over the Sierra trucks. But they can't shoot all of me. And every body I add makes me stronger. Oh, God. Oh, God. I feel like... I feel like... I feel like fresh fucking fruit. And I'm stronger again. And again. And again. And again. There's about 40 of us now, connected in a vast chain of moths. Some by our mouths, some by strong green branches bursting through our Lloyd suits, and me on a trunk high above them. I send more moss down, build a second trunk, bring Matt up next to me. 
and point at the last truck. I want to get there. Then let's get there. Can we move? Of course we can move. Look at all the legs we have. And he points down to my chain, my colony, my herd of bodies down below. So I try. I start moving all my legs. It's tricky at first, but I've always been a fast learner. After 20 seconds, we're full on walking. After 40, we're standing over the last truck. What am I hearing? What's out there? There's a roof in the way. I don't want it there. So... Inside, the men are all wearing helmets. We pull them off, one by one, adding each man as we go until we reveal Trip Hayden. His forehead scrunched like he's trying to understand. We wrap moss round his waist and lift him all the way up so we're face to face. Is your daddy a thief? (laughs) The tendrils rush in, ready to add him on instinct, but stop! I say who we add, and I don't want him in our colony. What, then? We wrap moss around his ankle, then his other ankle, then both wrists, then his neck. Can we pull him apart? Wait, 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 wait! Of course. And we start to (laughs) Wait! Unless we need his secrets. His secrets? When we eat a creature, we eat everything it contains. Waste is disrespect. That's very interesting. So we do add him. And when we do... I can can make a call! My dad! We go in through his tear ducts. And we add him. And we eat everything he's got. And then silence in the desert. And now? I have some ideas. We have some ideas. And we send out tendrils of moss, and we touch Matt's beautiful face. He did love me. As much as he could. As long as he could. I can see it. How long can we keep him? The more bodies we acquire, the longer we can preserve each one. Yeah. Sounds right. I start us walking, then faster, almost trotting, working up the courage to run. Is it time to go home? What? In the garage. Standing over us, you told Teresa it was your turn to go home. Yeah. Well. Tough. Tough? Some tours never end. Some people never go home. What then? We're gonna ride. You better fucking know, we're gonna ride. And then just like that, we're off. All those little legs in a galloping tandem thundering over the sand like a herd. The desert is goddamn splendid by night, and the wind wraps our whole body in cool energy. We take Matt's hand in ours, and we ride. And we ride. Steal the Stars by Mac Rogers, starring Ashley Atkinson. Presented by Tor Labs, produced by Gideon Media. Episode 14 also features Nima Jarabji, Rebecca Comtois, Abe Goldfarb, Tarantino Smith, Pete Bover, Patrick Shearer, Steve Alexander, and Alan Golgoski. 
music by Linda Worsley, sound design by Bart Fassbender, directed by Jordana Williams. Just a reminder, you can now order your own copy of the brilliant novelization of Steal the Stars by Nat Cassidy, published by Tor Books, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, iBooks, or wherever you shop for books. If you're enjoying the podcast and you'll love reading how Nat beautifully expands on these characters and the world they live in, visit tor-labs.com to learn more.